Good morning, good morning, good morning. Today is a very, very exciting day in the life of the church. It is Palm Sunday. This is the Sunday that we recognize Jesus coming into town on a donkey and folks waving palms and shouting Hosanna, Hosanna, whichever group you're in, uh, whichever side you're on. Uh, we are also, we are going to have a ham dinner, and then we're going to have an Easter egg hunt. And obviously, because of the weather, that is going to be inside. And so, again, super exciting day in the life of the church. So I have a couple of announcements. Uh, the first announcement is make sure and you go down the hallway uh, where the bathrooms are. On the way there, you will see the credo that the kiddos, our confirmation kiddos, wrote about their response to their baptism, baptismal vows. And so you should read those. Our kids this time, we have five. They're super cool kids, and it is interesting to see what they have to say of their responses. Also, make sure you pay attention to Facebook. We went and served at the All People's Pantry last on Saturday, and that was a great event as well. And then my last announcement is that uh, we do have a date for Dave Diggs's memorial service. That will be April 6th at 10 a.m. So now I will let you know you all should have received a nail. I have not because I did not follow directions. But you all received a nail. You will, uh, as you leave the sanctuary later, you will drop the nail in the bucket. So do not take the nail with you. Um, I would encourage uh, maybe the younger children should not have nails and uh, make sure that they go back to the bucket when you are done. Uh, after the choir is done singing, they will process, and then there will be the benediction, and then we will leave in silence, okay? So when I walk down the aisle in silence, you all can follow me downstairs to the meal. I believe that you have an announcement, Mr. Mark. Good morning, everybody, and welcome guests. We're glad you're here today. For those of you who haven't met, I'm Mark Wielander, the youth director here at Rockbrook. For the lunch, we have a full service meal. So what that means is you'll come into Fellowship Hall and you can be seated amongst your friends. We'll bring you drinks and then we'll also bring your food. And then when you're done eating, um, you can leave your plates. We'll take those off your hands and everything. There will be a dessert table. We're not gonna pick out your desserts for you, so you can you can pick out your own desserts and go up and grab what you want. We have lots of ham. I think I got like 36 pounds of ham. So um, it's scalloped potatoes. Um, there's corn. There's, uh, you know, those great, uh, what are they, King's Hawaiian dinner rolls? Like, I think I could eat like seven of those. But, um, but if there is something you don't want to have, we always try to conserve the food. You can let one of our youth know, like, hey, when you bring my plate, I, I don't really need any of that, and, and we'll keep it off your plate. We'll also give kids plates, um, and there is a couple high chairs and booster seats down there as well. Lemonade, coffee, um, water for everyone to drink. And then there is a donation bucket that will be towards the kitchen by our bulletin board for our mission trip, which we're going to Loveland, Colorado in July. We'll leave on a Sunday, come back on a Friday. We have sec secured our roster for our adult leaders at this time. However, we still need to fill a few more of the youth spots. So if you have uh, a youth that you're in connection with, uh, let's think about it, let's talk about it, and I can also talk about it with you because uh, it's a great experience, right? And that youth doesn't necessarily have to be a member at this church either. So come to me with any questions about that. We want to finalize the roster here soon. So that is the announcements I have, and I hope to see you downstairs after the service. Thank you. What if we want a whole plate of scalloped potatoes with the rolls on the side? Okay. All right, if you will rise in body and or spirit, we will follow along with our call to worship today. Jesus today of all days, 
We shout, oh, thank you. We shout with joy. We shout with joy that you have come into the world and come into our lives. Your compassion for us and for all creation stuns us. You do not desire sacrifices, but ask instead for a contrite heart and unrestrained worship. Turn with me to 280 and we will sing all glory, laud, and honor. 280. Thank you. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, children, for leading that parade. All right. There we go. Thank you, children, for joining us in that what we call palm processional, which means we are parading with our palm branches, and it's time to figure out why we're doing that. 
But actually, before we do that, I do want to answer probably the most important question of the day. Yes, we are still having the Easter egg hunt. And yes, it will be inside, which is not a problem. We have some big classrooms that we will use. So after the lunch downstairs, we will gather when everybody's done eating, and I'll give you directions at that time, okay? So I hope you can stay for that. So today is a special day in the church that we call Palm Sunday. And next week is a special day in the church that we call Easter. And the time in between is a week that we call Holy Week. Oh, I had some Sunday school listeners. Yay. Um, so there's a lot going on this week in our church life and in the life of Jesus back in the Bible times. But today was a happy, happy day. Raise your hand if you have ever been to a parade. Great. Parades are fun, right? You watch something go down the street. Maybe it's a marching band. Maybe it's a float with animals uh, dressed up or special people. Maybe people throw candy at you. There's all kinds of fun things about a parade. Well, Palm Sunday was basically a parade for Jesus. He was coming into the town of Jerusalem to take part in the Passover festivities that were going to be happening in that holy city. And there was a lot of people that knew he was going to be there and that had heard about him or seen him or knew him and loved him and wanted to know more. And they wanted to hear what he had to say. They thought that he was going to be his, their king that he was going to take over and be their king and help them with all their troubles. So they were waving their palm branches because that was kind of a tradition that they did back in the, palm, back in the Bible times. It'd kind of be like us waving a flag, maybe, or shaking a pom-pom, okay? Um, and they were saying the word... Anybody remember the word they were saying? Hosanna, very good. Hosanna. That's not a word that we use anymore much, other than in church. Hosanna kind of has two meanings. It originally meant, save me, help me. So they were asking Jesus for help. But the meaning that it eventually meant more was, yay, God, yay, Jesus. It's like giving him a high five with your voice, okay? So that's what Hosanna was all about. It was like cheering for him because they knew how much he loved them. I need five helpers to stand up there with some letters, okay? So I'm going to put you... Hold on. Missing a couple. Okay, I'm going to put you in order. Cecilia, do you want to be my first one? So you're going to stand right behind that microphone there. And you don't need to do anything with your paper yet. Keep it hidden. All right, PJ. Okay, Matilda. So put the letter like this, okay, so we can't see it. Stand next to PJ there. All right, I need two more, Terry and Lydia. Matilda, you can stand up on the top by PJ. Okay, Lydia, you're next to Matilda, and Terry, you're next to Lydia. Okay, have you guys ever been to a ball game where you cheered? Okay, we're going to do a cheer right now. So I'm going to say something, and you're going to answer me with what is on those cards. So when it's your turn, you're going to hold it up real high and turn it up, okay? It'll make sense. Are we ready? Let's pretend we're in Jerusalem. Ready? Give me a J. Give me an e. e. Give me an S. S. Give me a U. U. Give me an S. S. What's it spell? Jesus. Louder. Jesus. Louder. Jesus. All right. Very good. Thank you. Have a seat. So that's something that they might have done at that parade. Jesus was there for us, and this whole week is all about the plan that he had, that God had. Okay, 
I'm going to give you something on your way to your parents to sit down because there's a lot more than just Hosanna and he is risen next week. There's a whole week in between where no matter how old you are, you can think about God every day. So on this sheet, there's an M for Monday, T for Tuesday, W for what? Wednesday, Wednesday TH for Thursday, and F for Friday, and then a Saturday, Sunday. What I want you to do on here, it's blank. So depending on how old you are, you could, every day, I want you to look at this and do something that has to do with God. Say a prayer to God. Uh, do something nice for somebody. Read something in your Bible and check it off or put a smiley face or write a prayer if you're older. So every day this week, because it's Holy Week, stick close to God, okay? Let's say a prayer. Dear God, first, and first of all, thank you for the children who praise you and are here to worship you. And for those who couldn't be here today, we are thankful for them too. Be with us all this week as we travel through Holy Week and keep us close to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so you're going to come in a nice line and I'll tear off a sheet for you to take home and keep track of the week. I hope to see you next Sunday for Easter. We will have regular Sunday school and it's time to celebrate again. Your dad will tell you. Thank you. You're welcome. So a couple of things. I forgot about Holy Week. Well, I didn't forget about Holy Week, but that'd be bad. I forgot to announce Holy Week because I was too excited about Jesus in a dog stroller. Um, so Holy Week, do not forget that we are having multiple services. So the one on Thursday, the same thing that happens at noon will happen at 7 p.m. And then on Friday, there will be Stations of the Cross, and that will be open from 12 to 6. So you can come around and you can follow the pictures and the words. And then there will be a service at 7 p.m. on uh, Friday. If you will turn to the back of your bulletin, you will see all the folks that we need to keep in our prayers. I will add to it that we need to keep MJ in, her in our prayers as well. She currently has COVID, um, but she is, uh, Paige said that she is holding steady uh, with uh, her symptoms, so that is good. But remember to keep her in our prayers as well. And also, uh, Sherry's granddaughter had successful meniscus surgery. So um, thank you for praying for her as well. She wanted uh, me to tell you all that. Is there any other prayers or joys that we need to lift up this morning? All right, let's go to our God in prayer. Good and gracious God, you sent us, Jesus the Christ, to suffer death on the cross. God, we pray that we may share in Jesus' obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. God, we have many folks on our minds this morning who are sick in body and or spirit. God, we ask prayers for those who are in the hospital, those who are recovering from surgery, those who are in care facilities, those who are in hospice facilities. God, we pray that you give these folks that they know that you are with them and that they are given hope. God, we pray for all the folks that take care of them, doctors and nurses, friends and families, support staff of all the facilities, 
God, we ask that you give these folks perseverance. God of love. God, we pray for all of those who have lost loved ones. God, we pray that these folks will be surrounded in community throughout their grief. God, let them know that you are always with them. God of love, hear our prayers. God, we pray for places where there are countries where there are war, where there is war, countries where and places where there are natural disasters and places where there are political unrest. God, we pray for safety for those who have decided to stay. We pray for courage for those that decide to leave. And for those that see no other way, we pray for hope. God, we pray for peace for all the folks that are on the ground, who are serving, our military personnel, first responders. God, be with all of these folks. Give them courage. God, we pray for peace. God of love, hear our prayers. God, we pray for this church and the church universal. God, we pray for our ministry team. God, continue to give these folks courage. Continue to lay upon their hearts what we need to learn. God, be with all of the folks in our congregation. God, keep us all safe. God of love, hear our prayers. God, for this day, this day that reminds us that not everything seems as it is. When the crowds were expecting a king, you sent Jesus who we know is our king, but they did not. God, we know what the week entails. We pray that as we leave today, full of joy, full of hope, God, we pray as we discern what it means to be, to give our lives for for you, to know what it means to have a last supper, what it means to be a part in a community. God, help us to be the people that you continue, that you continue to need us to be. Help us to answer the call as we go about this week. God, we pray all of this in your son Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now it is a time that we give our tithes to this church, trusting in all that we do, trusting in God, who is the giver of all good things. Ushers.
gracious and holy God, we thank you for the gifts that we lay upon your table. And God, we trust that you will bless them, multiply them, and help us to continue to do the work inside and outside the walls here at Rockbrook. God, we thank you for every good and great, good and beautiful thing. Amen. All right, Paul, you all may be seated. Paul. The choir has something fabulous for us. Hear the word of the Lord. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have led you with an unfailing kindness. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and he sent and sent his son as a sacrifice for our sins. Greater love has no one than this, to lie down one's life for his friend. If someone asks me, what are these wounds on your body? I will answer, the wounds I was given at the house of my friends. My name is Judas. As soon as they condemned him this morning, 
I recognize my guilt in the Lord's death. I was weak and greedy and handed him to the chief priests for 30 pieces of silver. Almost immediately, I was ashamed and attempted to return the money. I told them, I have sinned, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us, they replied. That is your responsibility. In my heart, I knew they were right. I tossed the money at them and left. What I did was an act of treason. I might as well have driven the first nail into his hands.
When they came to the place called Golgotha, they crucified him, along with two criminals. And Jesus said, But I, when I am lifted up from earth, will draw all men to myself. My name is Peter. Last night, when Jesus was arrested, we all deserted him. He had told us earlier, this very night you will all fall away. In an attempt to prove my love, I declared that even if the others did so, I would never leave him. Jesus looked into my eyes and said, Peter, before the rooster crows twice in the morning, you will disown me three times. I insisted that I would die alongside him before disowning him, but then, after the arrest, I was terrified of what might happen. Perhaps they would come after all of us. So when I was recognized as one of the disciples, I denied it three times. I even denied knowing Jesus. I am as guilty as if I had helped nail him to the cross. Last night, it was as Zechariah had prophesied. Strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. Now, standing on this hill, it seems as though all of Jerusalem has been drawn to the spectacle. or by the open sea the broken and forgotten ones the children and the weak longing for a simple touch a single look their way he had compassion on them all and he was heard to say none of these who come to me will I turn away Betrayer or betrayed When I am high and lifted up For all the world to see My arms outstretched to welcome them I'll draw them all to me
One of the criminals on the cross beside Jesus began to hurl insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal said to him, Don't you fear God, since you are under the same sentence? We are being punished justly for the crimes we have committed, but this man has done nothing wrong. I am a thief, one of two being crucified today. I know I'm guilty. I deserve to pay for my sins. But this man who hangs beside me is innocent. He has done nothing to deserve such a death. And yet I heard him say, Father, forgive them, for they don't understand what they are doing. What man would ask forgiveness for those who nailed him to a cross? He must be the very Son of God. So I asked him to have favor on me when he comes into his kingdom. He looked at me with love and pity and promised that I will be there with him this very day. Who offers that kind of undeserved love?
Then Jesus cried out in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. Tombs broke open and the bodies of many saints were raised to life again. I am a Roman centurion, one of those responsible for guarding Jesus. I watched him as he suffered today, how he seemed to love those who put him to death. Not like the others I've seen crucified, even the guilty ones curse the crowd and insist that they don't deserve punishment. When we felt the earthquake and saw the dead raised to life, we were all frightened. Most of the crowd left immediately. But I found myself believing that surely this Jesus was the Son of God. I feel as though we all put an innocent man to death today. They will look on me, the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for me as one mourns for an only child, and grieve bitterly for me as one grieves for a firstborn. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. I am one of the people who lined the streets earlier in the week, waving palms and shouting Hosanna, calling this man blessed. But I stood before Pilate this morning and demanded with the rest of them that he be sentenced to death. Even Pilate didn't believe he was guilty of any crime. He told us, I am innocent of this man's blood. It is your responsibility. But we all answered, his blood is on us and our children. We are all guilty, Pilate included, for what we witnessed here today. I can't believe that in a few short days, we turned from praising him 
to condemning him. He looked directly at me before he died with forgiveness on his face. I couldn't bear to meet his eyes, to see the agony, to see what I had done. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquities of us all. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves 
and the truth is not in us. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We are going to pray for the meal that we are going to receive in a bit, and then I have a benediction for you. So let us pray for the meal that we will receive. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the meal that we are about to receive. We ask you to bless all the hands that made it and help it to bless our bodies as well. Amen. 
Jesus from that mountain, high among the olive trees, it would have been an easy walk down to the city, to Jerusalem, which lay below. So why choose to make your way on a donkey, on an everyday beast of burden? You felt almost dragging on the ground, and who are these people running bending low to spread their precious cloaks on the road before you, waving palm branches and shouting, save us, Hosanna to the Son of God. What is the raw and urgent hope that rises in their songs? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, why are you smiling? Blessed are we on the side of history shouting, Come, Lord, save us too. We know how it ends, and still we forget to rush toward our humble, forgettable king and yell, Hosanna, Hosanna. Our hope is in you.